Hello, my dear. Rhonda Constant, your favorite hometown medium, physical energy healer, oracle card advisor, paranormal investigator, voice for your loved ones. How are you today? Whoop, looking, looking down there a little too far. <laughs> uh, so you've done this before, I think. So I just still like to remind you, this is not an exact science. We communicate the best way we can. So sometimes you got to stretch it outside the box a little bit. And if something doesn't make sense, just keep it in mind. You'll remember it later, see it later, or somebody else will validate it for you later. So we're going to talk to Dad today. He's coming in just very slow. Not, not because he's having trouble walking. So we don't have trouble walking anymore. <coughs> Excuse me. But just slow and peaceful and patient and he says hopeful. Not sure what he's hopeful about yet. He's hoping that this will be a blessing to you. He loves you very much. You were my rock. You were my rock star. You are a bright and shining star. Don't let anybody dim your light. Don't say it again. Don't let anybody put a cover over your light. He said, he says you're like this. You're like all closed up, just totally closed up as tight as you can get. You're living in fear. He says, you almost feel like somebody's strangling you. And I don't mean physically. I don't mean like somebody's trying to kill you, strangling you. But it's like, it's like, it's like you're being cut off. You're, you're, you can't say what you need to maybe, or keeping too much to yourself. And oh, that's not it. You just feel like somebody's strangling you, but not physically like they're trying to kill you type of strangling, but in other ways. You can't breathe. Not because it's physical. He said it's almost like you're trying to make yourself invisible. If you feel you feel like if you get it in a tight enough ball that you'll be invisible and they whoever they are won't be able to see you they won't be able to hurt you okay he's making me want want to do meditation type breathing it seriously helps calm and relax you. You don't have to do the om um, and you know, do any weird meditation stuff. Just breathe in through the nose real slow. Some people hold it a little bit and then you breathe out through the mouth. Do that at least three times slowly whenever you get that tight up knot going on. And breathe in as deep as you can because. Honestly, our bodies don't get enough oxygen. Our uh, automatic shallow breathing is really not enough for the cells in our body. And I used to have a note on my computer. I need to put it on my new computer. It just said breathe because I don't do it. And I forget to. You really need. It really helps that knot. It really helps calm. It really, it really has nothing to do with meditation. You can if you want to, but. 
Actually, I need it right now. He says, don't, don't live in fear. You are divinely protected. Okay, so he's standing on my right. I know some of these make me look backwards. Some of these videos. He's standing on my right and he's standing there with his hand on my shoulder. So he's, he's got his hand on my shoulder. You should feel that pressure, warmth, tingling. Um, Maybe like there's a bug crawl in there you can't get off. That itchy type, they make me itch. <laughs> Their energy makes me itch. But everybody feels the energy different. You're not going to feel it the same way I do. He said he stands right there a lot. Not because he feels like he needs to protect you, but because he feels... Like the presence of his energy that close to you will make you feel safe and loved and protected. And he wants you to honor yourself. Don't think I've heard it put that way before. Honor yourself first. Foremost, get out of your cage, C A G E, somebody has you in a box, and I talk about being in someone else's box all the time, and get out of it. Do your own thing. Be you. Be free. He wants you to get out of that box. He says he's not even sure you realize it. Somebody has got you in their box. You're confined to their beliefs. Switch it up. He's actually showing you in this big box. and It's like you're peeking your head out over the side. You're like looking. Like looking, like kind of like to be out there, but you're still in there. Okay, so he wants me to tell you. I don't even say it every morning. I just expect it because I used to say every morning, I expect Archangel Michael to be at my back. I want him to put his wings tips on my shoulders. I want to know that he has my back. He is the big protector. I wish I had one of my cards in front of me that had a picture of him on it. He is the war. Yeah, he's not really a war. Yeah, he is a warrior. He always has a shield and a spear and an armor. And he's always gorgeous <laughs> on all the cards. <laughs> he's my hunka hunka. Asking to stand behind you and have your back at all times. Sometimes you'll even feel him. I can feel his tips, tips of his wings touching right there, where he usually does. And I know I'm safe and protected and, and secure. Until I do something dumb <laughs> to get myself in trouble. He can't stop that. There's something you need to approach from a different angle. Let's see if he's going to tell me what it is. Well, he says one thing is life. But something in particular. New teeth. Something in particular that you need to approach from a new angle. View it different. It's like he's got a spyglass. He wants you to look at it different. You're in a rut. You're in a rut with sharp edges. Don't have no clue what that means. Hopefully you do. It's, I don't need to know. It's none of my business. 
They're in a rut with sharp edges. I mean, it's like he's showing razor blades sticking up out of the ground. Like everything's touchy. Like you can't walk through there. Or... I'm, I'm not sure what he's symbolizing with this picture. It's like a dirt mound, dirt road, and all this stuff. And then there's these big, huge razor blades sticking up out of the ground everywhere. Like, almost like landmines. Says you're afraid you're going to cut yourself and bleed. He's not talking physically. He's talking, I don't know if I want to call it emotionally, but it's not physically. It's not like you're going to go down the road and find a bunch of razor blades stuck up in the ground. It's not what he means. Okay, so when he when he talks about a different viewpoint, I'll give you a couple things they've told me before. One is like, okay, let's let's say you got a bunch of people with drama, but if you step back out of the circle and look at it like an observer instead of one that's in the middle of it, and I don't know if you have any drama or anything going on like that. I'm just giving this example, just an example. But if you step back like you were a stranger and you're sitting across the restaurant or something and watching this, what would you think? You, you have a whole different perspective if you're in the middle of it or if you're that stranger sitting back there just kind of observing and going. You would have a whole, whole different ideas in your head or whole different um, ideas is not the right word. Um, whole different um things that you would say about it or think about it or feel about it. And the other thing is I can sit on the floor and I can look around the room, but if I stand up on the kitchen counter, I have a whole different perspective of what the room looks like or I see the dirt up there too. <laughs> Get a whole different different viewpoint, different perspective just by changing the angle of it or changing stepping back or stepping up or I hope some of that makes sense because he's wanting me to tell you those just to give you an idea I love you baby doll I am always there he stays by you a lot I would say the majority of his time, at least when he's popping in here. I know I've probably told you before, I promise you a thousand percent, he can hear you, he can see you. Talk to him. Tell him everything. He already knows, but talk to him. Talk to him. All right, he's wanting you to... Whatever your fears are, or whatever it is you're scared of, or whatever it is you're you're doing this from, write it down. Literally, write it. Write it. Just get it all out. All of it. Just write it. Take it outside and burn it. And um, when you see the smoke come off of it, Ask an angel to come down and take that energy and transmute it into something good. No, it sounds witchy. I know it sounds weird, but it totally changes the energy. Sometimes, sometimes I'll pull it back in though and I'll go, I guess I better do it again. Because I'm good at pulling that shit back in. But uh, it's it just like sage. Uh, the sage, when we sage the house, we move all the energy out of the house, you know, and and but I expect the angels to take that energy, that heavy energy, and transmute it into something good. Ask them to. Native Americans always believe in the white smoke. No, I did not leave you. 
He got a little testy when he said that. No, I did not leave you. I didn't need that crappy body anymore. It was starting to fail me. I was tired of it. It wasn't going to work any better. But no, I did not leave you. And he's kind of wrinkling his face up like, He says, darn it. I don't know what, sure what that was for. He goes, darn it. Yep, he's talking about spaghetti. He said something about spaghetti. Could be because I was thinking about making spaghetti for supper tonight. So we'll just... Take that however. Maybe you're making spaghetti. Maybe you had some last night. Maybe he loves spaghetti. Maybe that was his favorite. Maybe you made it for him all the time. But otherwise, if then none of that, anything like that's true, just take it as I plan on making spaghetti tonight. <laughs> just in case. <laughs> I try to be as honest as, as I can. We uh, definitely don't want to make anything up. He says, how hopeful are you about the situation? Oh, and then he, he shows an arrow and it's like, brrr, not very hopeful at all. How hopeful are you about the situation? That arrow's going, and it's a big black arrow going straight down very fast. It almost felt like my stomach dropped. Change your stinking thinking. So again, again, whatever it is that you're not hopeful about, whatever the situation is, don't need to know the details. You'll know. Whatever this situation is that you are not hopeful about, sit down and write. We're going to do kind of the same thing. He's going, he's going like this. Yep, yep, yep. Sit down and write. You're not allowed to write anything, any negative thoughts. Nothing, nothing, nothing. What is positive about the situation? Or what would the positive outcome be? Shortest words as possible. <clears throat> Don't make a big long letter of this one. The other one, you can blow out all your feelings all you want to. The one you're going to burn. This one, you just make a simple little line. Has to be only positive words. If it's not positive words, write it over. And write down several things. Okay. I I do a list, something like that. I used to do it every morning. I haven't done it for a while, so I need to get back to it. Put it on my, com I have it on my computer. Uh, you can burn this if you want to. It doesn't. This one doesn't really require that, but if you don't want anybody else to see it, you can burn it. I mean, this is this is just for you. Nobody's supposed to help you write this. So, write hopeful things about the situation. Hopeful. What you hope for. What you would like to see. But like I said, I, I cannot stress it enough. It has to be just simple. To let them work on the details. Because it'll come in a way that you would never thought of. Never, ever. So ask your team for help. You don't need to know who they are. Ask your dad and he'll bring in whoever needs to help do this. They cannot override your free will choice. You cannot stress that strong enough to people. So you have to ask and you have to be ready to allow what happens. You have to take steps forward. You have to, you, oh, what did my friend say this morning? I need to write that down. It was so good. Mm, I have to go look and see if I can find it. Anyway.
But anyway, you have to you have to ask. You have to give them permission to help you. And then when something pops up or somebody calls or it's always a door opens, sometimes doors close to make it happen. So just t take whatever happens in the near future as your next step. And then it's up to you whether you step forward. That's your, there's your free will choice. They can bring it to you. They bring me good stuff all the time and I don't do it. And they go, Rhonda, why are you doing that? Why aren't you, why aren't you, we gave this to you. Yeah, I don't want to. So he's self. He says self. S-E-L-F. Work on self. Not that you need work. That's for me. The self was from him. Not that you need work. But it's it's going to ease anxiety and help open things up and give you a more clear picture. It he's showing your eyes like kind of foggy, like you're like you're stuck in this. And that's still part of this. Be a little more vulnerable. Not too much. Don't be so vulnerable. You get used. Be vulnerable. I cannot talk with these D. Dang it. <laughs> you know the word I mean. With the V. <laughs> that you're open a little more. So people can see your light. He says, you are such a beautiful person inside. You're holding on to anger. Part of the anger you're holding on to is because your dad left you and you need him. Because your daddy's little girl, he says. But I did not leave you. He's doing it again. <laughs> did not leave you. <laughs> He's giving you the look. You are so special. You're not seeing that in yourself. How special you are. Each. Say it again. Each one of us is a drop in the ocean. And if we didn't have all those drops in the ocean to make the ocean, there would be no ocean. Does that make sense? Dad says, of course it does. There would be no ocean. Every little drop is important. The less drops, the less water. Ocean until it goes dry. That's for me. He says, don't hide your light. Boy, he's really, he's really on this light thing. Um, and he's reaching up, pulling a, a chain on a light bulb in, like in a ceiling. And he's turning the light on. So if you, okay, so if you can imagine a little light bulb inside your head and you pull the chain, turn it on, brighten up, shed that, show it, open it, open that little door, let that light out, let that light shine. Happy feet, dancy feet, that's what he said, <laughs> dancy feet. Let it shine. Contour, C-O-N-T-O-U-R. I don't know what he means by that. He's not giving a lot of validations, but I think you've done it before and you know that that's, this is him. 
This is his show. It's all up to him. He has free reign. I'm just the mouthpiece. <laughs> he says, now go make me some bacon and eggs. Oh, he's going back to that light bulb. He's laughing about the bacon and eggs. Okay, there's two right there. The light bulb. If you have a light that flickers, it doesn't have to have a chain. If you have a light that flickers or a light that goes out, if it's just a burnout light bulb, they're going to do that. So I can't say for sure, you know, that would be a sign. But light flickering or light going off and on. Or, well, that's flickering, dummy. Um, just e electronics. Because we're energy, we're energy when we leave. Is easy for them to um, do something with. So the light, watch for a light to mess, kind of mess up. And the smell of bacon. You'll get that whiff. And yeah, I've probably told you this before. You get that whiff of bacon. You can be outside in the store, in your house, doesn't matter, car, doesn't matter where you're at. You get that whiff of bacon. Know that those things are a sign. And uh, he's popping in to tell you he loves you. So validate him, acknowledge him, and tell him you love him and ask him to bring you more. Give him permission. Tell him it's okay. Oh, oh, I know what he wants. Hang on. Okay, so he wanted me to pull a release card for you. That's crazy. Um, anyway, this is a release card from your dad to you. This is what he wants you to know. Surrender to your soul's path. Your life's journey has been perfectly designed for your soul's growth. Embrace every lesson and every moment. A lot of the things you're going through are just lessons. We're here to learn. We're in school when we come to earth to learn things that help develop our soul, that um, expand our soul, our spirit. Yeah, I know. Sounds weird. But, uh, and before he asked me to pull your card, my eyes kept getting drawn to the card I got this morning because I usually pull one in the morning for me. Surrender worry. Make a commitment not to lead an anxiety-driven life. When worries arise, breathe them out of your body. There's the breathing. Focus on the power of your heart and have faith that spirit is guiding you always. A lot of times when you get that knot in your stomach and you go covering up, it's because you're you're not you're not seeing another door that's open you're you're stuck in this where you're not supposed to be you're not moving forward you're you know it's just like standing on the counter you can't see something that you need to see and i don't know what it is but it's like there's a door over here that's open for you but you're got you've got your head down so there's some opportunity that's standing there waiting for you, but you're not making the step forward. So think about what it is. Will that make your heart sing? Whatever this, and I don't give a shit if it makes you money or loses you money. It's not about money. I don't care if it's dancing, art, walking in the rain. I don't care what it is. What would really open your heart and make your heart sing? What is the one thing? Because that's where your soul is supposed to go next. That's your next step. What is it that you look at or long for sometimes? You go, well, I'd really like to do that, but I don't have time or I don't have the money. Or somebody would think I was crazy. Do you know how crazy people thought I was when I started doing this? But it's what I was supposed to do. It's, it made my heart sing. It make, I, I can help people. I can help lots of people. It's what my soul was designed to do next. And I was brought to it in a very harsh, hard, painful way. So, just, he wants, he wants you to think about that. He's giving me a thumbs up. Know that he is right there, protecting you, giving permission, asking. Don't beg, don't say you have to. Just asking, and he'll do it. 
anytime you feel fearful, ask him to come in a little stronger. Um, bring his energy forward a little stronger, maybe. Maybe then you can feel it better. You might suddenly get really hot, like a hot flash. I know. I was laying on the couch this morning, watching TV, and somebody kept playing with my hair. Don't know who it was, but they're there. I wish they'd tell me, because I don't like it <laughs> when I don't know who it is for sure. Even I don't know, always. But there's only certain ones that are allowed in my house. So, much love to you, my dear. Thank you for allowing me to be his voice. Um, he's right there. Asking. And uh, when you kind of open up and you allow these things to come towards you, when you do this, it blocks everything. It blocks all the... It doesn't just block bad. It blocks the good. The good can't... It can't get to you. It's trying to get in there. So you got to open up a little bit to get the good too. Don't be fearful of it. He's protecting you. Ask Archangel Michael to help you. And you will feel invincible. You get Archangel Michael, you'll be invincible. It's not like you can go jump off a building or anything, but you know what I mean. You are divinely protected. There's an older female that is there too. Older female, like a grandma type figure. That is uh, waiting to help. And I don't know. I think I've done a reading or two for you before. So I don't remember who else. Who else we did this on. Or if it was just your dad. Okay. Much love to you, my dear. Think about what dad said. Write that stuff. Burn it. Don't just throw it in the trash can. Because then it's still kind of lingering around. And it's your shit. So, burn it or whatever you need to do so nobody else sees it, because that's just for you. But ask him to help you when you do it. Little ideas that pop in your head you never thought of. Much love to you. Quit babbling. Rhonda Constant, your favorite hometown medium, physical energy healer, oracle card advisor, paranormal investigator, voice for your loved one. Later.